And we are live. How about you, everybody? Welcome into the latest episode of the Auburn Live Recruiting Call-In Show. Got a great show for you tonight, I think. I'm guessing. We should. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, uh, Senior Recruiting Editor for, for Auburn Live on 3. I'm joined tonight by my two big dog cohorts, Mr. J. Head, Mr. Allen J. Head Head. How you doing, Mr. J. Head? I'm doing good, brother. Doing really good. Doing better than yesterday. Like I said, I may Ooh. earn my title of uh, Female Dog of the Week. You know, come <laughs> next Tuesday, we're going to find out on that one. But uh, no. Throw your name in the hat. There you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm putting myself in consideration for two weeks down the line here. So, oh, uh, nah. I'm going to the skids on that. Mr. Mr. Cole Pinkston, uh, Auburn Live on Three recruiting analyst. Cole, how the hell are you, big dog? I'm doing awesome. Sitting out here in uh, in the humidity, so if y'all see me glistening just a little bit, don't worry oh. about it. I'm, I'm gonna make it. <laughs> oh, it's it's thundering here. By the yeah. way, I, I ordered Ethernet cables and the adapter because you know a couple weeks ago I was having some shoddy service. Right. Sure. Ordered them uh, last Monday. Went on uh, Amazon. They still hadn't shipped them. And I expect more from Amazon. Dude, I ordered them a week ago. I called them Saturday. I cussed them out. Poor lady Thanks, up dude. in Seattle. And she goes, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll email. Of course, obviously, it wasn't this accent. But she said, I'll, I'll get with the warehouse. I said, you you will get that order. And you will over next day. And she goes, yeah, we'll get it to you someday <laughs> next week. I said, all right, then. Before they answered the phone, they saw the area code. And they said, yeah. that's that guy that called Wow the other day. <laughs> yeah, me, uh, yeah, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. <laughs> Three, three, four. No, no, not taking that. <laughs> oh, anyways, as we said, hey, listen, we are, uh, as we always do with our calling show, we're going to let you guys dictate the show, the topics. We've got plenty to talk about. We're going to do that uh, on Thursday in the, on the Shrivel Pod. Lots to talk about this week. June was the work put in, the work month. July will be results, or at least that's what Auburn is hoping. Some big time announcements coming up Friday. Jeremiah Cobb, the four star running back from Montgomery. Saturday, Carmelo English, the four-star wide receiver from Central Phoenix City. And then on Tuesday, you've got the four-star edge from Highland Home and Keldrick Falk. Auburn is finalist and in the thick of it for every one of those guys. We're still waiting to see what Brock Glenn, the quarterback from Tennessee, is going to do. And, oh, Mr. Chase Woods says, I'm a network engineer. Weird flex there, Chase. Uh, <laughs> I'll just make you some. Please do, dude. I mean, I got, a, I got 50 feet order, Chase. I need to go – I mean, I, I – I'm going to move my office to the other end of the house. Good call. And, and, and I think I'm going to move my modem too, but I'm going to get a 50 footer just in case, just in case. I mean, my house is what, 1900, 2000 square feet. It ain't, it ain't, you know, I, I ain't, I'm, I'm not in a different area code over in my bedroom. <laughs> so uh, appreciate you, Chase. Uh, Cody, Cody's coming. This is what we need to talk about, Cody. I like it. Cody wants to know what are the chances of Austin Novosad at Chooseys, Ohio State, for those that don't know, Austin Novosad, I believe, is from te Texas, Jay Head. That's correct. Committed to Baylor. Committed to Baylor. He's uh, Georgia has offered. Ohio State has now offered. He was once thought to be Ohio State's 1A. Georgia has gotten into the game, I think, a couple of others. But there's this, this dominoes, right? I mean, you've got yes. the quarterback dominoes where the, you got Austin Novosad and Brock Glenn. Novosad is committed to Baylor. Brock Glenn obviously isn't committed to anybody. Mm -hmm. Anybody, yep, and all these schools are jumping in late to uh, to this these recruitments. Nova said we think if Ohio State gets Nova said flips his commitment from Baylor, it would put Auburn in a perfect position to get Brock Glenn, which we've kind of felt like they were in since April until Florida State offered, Ohio State offered, LSU just recently offered. Correct. So a lot of things going on. Jay, what what you, you've been following this quarterback uh, scenario, the saga. What, what's yes. your take on this? So, obviously, Arch Manning was the biggest domino. And once that fell to Texas, everybody else has started to kind of mm. reach, like you said, for a quarterback that's more attainable. Georgia has offered um, Austin Novosad, Texas A&M, mm. a big offer there when they missed on Dante Moore, who's now going to Oregon. Jaden Rashada has, has gone to Miami, which now creates a two-quarterback class for them. But what all of that has done is, is Brock Glenn has now started to get offers that he never anticipated that he was going to get, which has caused a delay in his recruitment. I would say the chances of Austin Novosad going to OSU are not high right now. I actually like him going to Texas A&M. I believe he is an Aggie legacy at this point, which to me sets up potentially for Brock Glenn to go to Ohio State. I don't know that that's in fact what's going to happen with Brock. I think, to be honest, he's taking a step back and he's looking at all of his options. 
I think yeah. he's going to kick yeah. this can down the road as far as he can. Is there are there instability concerns from his camp with regard to what's going to happen in Auburn? I think that that's legitimate. I think we're working through that, and and we're basically going back to the relationship and telling him and reassuring him that just have your faith in us. There are some things that are in the works. Watch what's going to happen on the first and the second. You'll see that there are other people that believe in this vision. So regardless of what Austin Novoselic does, I still think that there's an opportunity there for us to land Brock Glenn. Does it hurt our chances some with him, with Novoselic maybe going to A and M or staying with Baylor? Yes, but it doesn't make it impossible. Yeah, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that Ohio State is the pick there. Although it would be hard to pick against them. Yes, but he, I, you know, I talked to our Ohio State guys, and he was like, "Man, listen, you know, I, I'm not saying it's a done deal. You know, who knows." But I, I feel like, and, and Cole, you might agree with me here, I feel like Auburn's chances are diminishing with every day that he waits. Yes. I feel yeah. like, Cole, what yeah. do you think? The time is not on Auburn's side here. Well, I, I go back to, I don't know if it was two weeks ago when we had the live show and we got the question, you know, on a scale of one to ten, how how much does the Ohio State offer worry you? And uh, at the time, I was, you know, I, I gave it a six because I was, I was concerned on that because – he had told me personally, hey, I've got some other schools talking to me, so I want to get it done before Elite 11, but depending on what happens, you know, we'll, we'll kind of we'll kind of do that as we go. We'll figure that out as we go. So yep. he's the man of his word. He's doing that. Uh, I don't blame him. I mean, he's got he's got a bunch of schools he wants to check out now. So um, I don't think Auburn's completely out of it personally. I just think that other schools are in it now. And yeah, that's the and only it, difference. With the Elite 11 starting today, we should start hearing some more quotes from him. We get some more interviews on him, find out what's going on more from him. Zach, what you got for us, big dog? Got our first caller of the night. 601, you're live. 601. What's up, guys? Uh, Wayne County again calling. Wayne hey, County. what's up? All right. Or Sam 11 on the boards. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Y'all may have covered this i i have not watching the youtube but i was just wondering jay head what's what's going on with old Kendrick falk you're usually mr positive but <laughs> you, you nominated yourself for female dog of the week so <laughs> looking a little grim you expected these questions jay head you know of course i did you, you, listen I, I may or may not have, have put that on the board just so you call in sam 11 just to see what you can get from a uh, from a viewership standpoint no the reality of the situation is um I saw some things yesterday. I exchanged some messages with a couple of people that told me that they felt like Clemson was very much in it. At that time, I probably showed uh, <laughs> that I'm a rookie, and I went with my gut in the fact that I posted that I felt like he was trending to Clemson. Very soon thereafter, uh, Jay Lee's reporting, Chad Simmons reporting, multiple other people kind of reached out to me and said, hey, it's not a done deal that he's trending towards Clemson. He's wide open. And that's what I've learned more than anything at this point. I don't think he's a done deal to any one team that's in the mix. I do think it's a three-team battle. I don't think it's a four-team. I know Florida's listed there. Yeah. But to me, it's Florida State, Clemson, Auburn at this point. And I, I don't believe a decision's been made, Sam. So right now, I'm probably moving backwards from that. Hey, he's trending towards Clemson. And it's more, hey, he's wide open. And I don't know exactly what's going to happen just yet. And Sam, I'll add this, man. I don't. Th- oh, no, I, I don't think in, anybody at Clemson feels great. I don't think anybody at Auburn feels great. I don't think anybody at Florida State feels great. Uh, and that's just from talking to guys associated with those programs. I don't think there's a lot of confidence. I think everybody thinks that those three schools think they have a great shot. I just don't think there's a, a there's an equal amount of confidence there. <clears throat> Whereas. Uh, <sighs> It'll be close. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I'm where, just where everybody that Bob pushing up his commitment in English can can turn some wheels. Let's build some momentum. Well, hey. Okay, here's where I get my doubts from. Remember when he left his official visit? He was gonna he was gonna come back for Big Cat. He was gonna announce shortly thereafter. Yeah, uh, everything had lined up. He loved to visit. His mom was really uh, overwhelmed yeah. with the visit and all of that. It meant a yes. lot to them. Yes. And there was a lot of personal attachments and connections there with his family in Auburn and some of the guys on staff, specifically Trevon Reed. Um, yeah. So everything looked good. And then all of a sudden he comes out with July 5th. And that was like, whoa, wait a minute now. Like, where's <laughs> yeah. this coming? Is that good? Is that good? Um, if he's planning to come to Big Cat, it is. 
Right. Uh, but I have I have learned that he was he was he had a, a, a date later in the in the month set up. The venue he wants to hold the ceremony was booked that date. So th- uh, this was yeah. this was a uh, this was a kind of a opportunity uh, presents itself for this venue that he wants to make his announcement. So July the fifth is how that date came about. Uh, but I think we're going to learn a lot more in the next few days. That one is, uh, I think we all agree, it's pretty much up in the air. Cole, you you with me? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been trying to find out as much as I can on that one. Um, y- you know, in a day and age where we kind of, we get you ready for where a guy might go, this one's a surprise, man. It, it might be a surprise. It could go three different ways. And it, and I, I'm not completely counting out Florida, to be honest, because people I've talked to close to them, they, they don't know either, man. They don't know. I think moving up the date is is sort of a uh, surprising to everyone. <laughs> oh, I definitely agree. And one more thing, this Brock Glenn is kind of giving me the the, the blues. Not because <laughs> if we miss out on him, I just think the perception is so bad that we got in on him early, built that relationship, like Darius Clemens talked about relationships, and then we lose him and the. Uh, the eleventh hour to Michigan. It just feels like a little bit of that again. Jay Head, you're our Brock Glenn expert. Okay, so I think right now, what Sam, what I would take away from that is, you have to look at the position that Auburn's in. This staff mm-hmm. was put in really, and I'm not trying to make excuses because look, close only counts in horseshoes and slow dancing, man. You know, either, either you win or you don't. First right, stage. You land the kid or you don't. <laughs> okay. But I would say that the perception around Auburn and the way certain certain people have characterized Auburn to various prospects, not just with Brock, but various prospects, has not been advantageous for Auburn this recruiting cycle. Okay. There's been a lot for them to overcome. And a kid that's at this point being overwhelmed with New offers every other day. I mean, obviously, Ohio State's a, a massive offer when you look at what they've done from a quarterback development standpoint. LSU, Brian Kelly is no slouch when it comes to quarterback development. At one point, he was talking to Texas A&M and Jimbo. You know, a lot of teams have come in and caught this kid's attention. It doesn't mean that he's not going to land with Auburn. It just means that he's blown away. He needs more time to decide what he's going to do. And any time a kid pushes a commitment, it's because somebody offered that they weren't expecting. And that's exactly what happened in this situation. I'm not expecting him to land with Auburn at this point. And I actually – I've come around to the point that I don't even think it's a class killer, okay? Does it hurt from a perception standpoint? Sure. But he's not – we have four quarterbacks on the roster. I think this staff is smart enough to be able to take a step back and find an undervalued guy – or a guy in a class where there's a two, they've, they're taking two quarterbacks and pitch him to be their guy. I mean, I think there's multiple directions we could take a transfer that's a younger kid. There are other ways we can go to probably feel that quarterback need in this class. But I understand where you're coming from, and I would just say be realistic in that, understand where this staff is coming from, the what they're having to fight through, and that they can't get to this season fast enough to put five wins mm-hmm. on the board to flip the script on some of these things that have been said behind the scenes. Yeah, no doubt. Penn State can't get here fast enough. Hey, thank you all so much for taking the time to talk with me. I really appreciate, appreciate you, Sam. It. Really sure, appreciate it. Zach, you got somebody else lined up? Oh, yeah. We got a whole line of callers. So, guys, if you call in, just stay on the line. We will get to you Very as nice. soon as we can. 205, you're live. 205, how you doing, buddy? Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is uh, Solomon. I'm Solid G on the board. What's up, brother? All right. Not much, not much. Uh, I got a question about uh, Zach Calzada. Uh, Assuming that he is the starting starting quarterback at Auburn, I'm just, I'm guess, I'm guessing what I want to know is how much would the offense be adapting to him, or how much would he have to adapt to the offense? Because I seen one of you guys post something saying that they were taking some things from what Texas A&M did to implement to make him feel more comfortable. I'm just trying to see would it be more of what they ran at Texas A&M for this offense this year. I think, I think, Sally, I think Cole actually did a piece yeah. on that. Did you not take that? Yeah, at yeah, something like that along those lines. But to me, man, it, it seems like when Harson had Keesaw in mind to be the offensive coordinator, they already had 
an offensive style in mind of what they wanted to do. And Calzada was a guy that fit that. So it was more of this is the kind of offense we want. Let's go find a guy that fits that offense. Calzada became available. They got him. And uh, I think they'll, you know, they'll throw some nuances in there to help him out. To uh, He's got great arm talent, so they'll try to work on that and, and use that. And and that's, uh, to me, that that was something that was planned before they got him, in my opinion. This is a guy that they, they were looking for to fit that. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Solid. Solid G, we appreciate that call, oh, man. No question. What, yeah, what's the question? Go for it. Uh, I see a lot of I see a lot of us on the board absolutely go nuts when somebody <laughs> makes a comment about a player turning away. And then, <laughs> the, the actual signing day, it's not until December. So we got a whole season of football to play where these coaches can actually prove what they can do rather than trying to sell, you know, sell stuff and the season ain't started yet. So to, to the people on the board, just be patient. Give these coaches a chance to show y'all what Auburn football is about. And we go light it up. We're in the basement. Let's go, Sully. Let's go. Woo! <laughs> Greatest call ever, Sully. I, 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 I love it. If, everybody, you, if everybody had the mentality of Sully G, man, this would be a great, great <laughs> world. No, and he's right. And, I, you know, here's the thing. For those that commit elsewhere, we're going to try to stay alive in those recruitments as much as we can. And if we do start off five and zero, oh, he's absolutely right. It's going to try to we're going to try to be flip city. That makes it more mm-hmm. difficult when you're trying to flip a kid than when you're trying to get a kid to commit. But it is what it is at this point. Good right. call, Zolly. We appreciate yeah, it, man. Great, man. Three, three, four. You're live. I'm sorry you got to follow up that great call. <laughs> hey, this is Mrs. Kingston. Hey, oh, hey. Cole, a very happy birthday. Appreciate it. Eagle. Cole's a Miss Pink. All Wait right. a minute. Now, how old is Cole turning today? 28. Woo. Cole, why are you so red? Yeah, 28. <laughs> Look at him. Uh, Look hey, at him. I, I told y'all I was in the humidity, y'all. That's what Cole, it is. Yeah. Coach, she sounds way too hot for you. I'm just going to be honest with you. you you're go. right. You're absolutely right, brother. <laughs> hey, look, it, when, when Coach out kicks his coverage, it's a good thing. There you go. That's how you got to do it. Always. <laughs> well, thank you, Miss well, Pink. What, what a sweet little, little call. Yeah, thank you, Miss Pink. We appreciate that. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I'll see you in two hours, okay? Okay. We'll see you then. Got you on the timeline. I like it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My, hey, listen, if anybody could follow up Solid G, it was Miss Pink. There you go. That there was you well timed. Very well timed. Austin Letlow coming in with uh, Air Nolan. Uh, when is his commitment date? Jay Head, you're a quarterback guy. Time frame, have you seen this? Thinking it could be 2022 to jumpstart 2024. Most likely wait. So, the best of my understanding with regard to Air Nolan, obviously he's a 2024 quarterback. He's somebody that probably you're looking February to April time frame next year of 2023 before he's going to commit. I don't believe he's going to do anything anytime soon, or that's the impression that I'm under. Obviously he's very highly connected to that group of players that are coming from that high school would be fantastic to get him early, but I don't anticipate him making a decision because there are new schools that are coming in on him too, and probably will offer this fall once they see him play. So I would expect somewhere between February to May of, of 2023 is probably the time frame we're looking at. I I I, I concur. I, I've I, you know we visit he, he visited and camped in Auburn back in I think early June, and I know there's some optimism there for Auburn uh, with him. I know there's a kid from Savannah I think in 2024. Yes. That, Another kid uh, from Miami that they also just offered that, that came and camped, and then there's the kid. Who was at Oxford, but he transferred McClellan. I'm trying to think of his, yeah, his name. yeah. Kamari. Where did he go to? Kamari? Was it Kamari McClellan? Mc- Kamari McClellan. Where did he transfer? It was Pinson Valley, right? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Or was it Chuck to, or Clay Chalkville? Oh, it was Clay Chalkville. It was Clay Chalkville. Yep. Sure was. Zach, what you got, big dog? Got another caller here. We are live, caller. 205, you're live. Hey, what's up, fellas? What's up, 205? Yeah, from Birmingham. 
What's your okay. first name? What's your name? Bo, man. Bo. Bo. Bo from Birmingham. All right. Yes. Sir. Sounds like you from Forestdale. Yeah, like from Jay Head's neck of the woods. Hey, 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 hey now. <laughs> All right, Bo, what you got, big dog? You got that Highway 78 interference. Yeah. Hey, BK is <laughs> right, man. BK is right. Zach, I, I'm terrible at this, man. I, I'm not, I, I'm trying to be a YouTuber, but I'm not. BK. So, w- what am I supposed to say here? Like, like and share, or what do you say? Like and subscribe. Yeah. Like, like and subscribe. subscribe, subscribe to the channel, all that, man. That's it, yeah. Brooks would know how to do this. Brooks there you go. And uh, subscribe to Auburn Live for a dollar. If you subscribe to Auburn Live, forgot about that too. Yes, God you bless America. We need Brooks to come on and do an infomercial for us. If let yeah. him have that one segment. <laughs> yeah, right. I did, I did. I did figure this out though. If you do subscribe to our channel and you put the alerts on every time a show comes on, it, it, it sends you an alert. Hey, man, there's something else to listen to. So Auburn Live on YouTube. Go to our – is that a channel, our webpage, whatever the hell it is? Yes, channel. 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 It's a channel. And uh, and subscribe to it and give us a thumbs up, big dog. All right, I think uh, this is Bo, Bo trying to call back in here. Hopefully he's got that worked out. 205, you're live. Hey, man, it's Bo again. What's up, Bo? Uh, not much. Happy birthday, Bo. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. Hey, uh, you know, you see all these commitments, man, but if I was a commit, if I was a recruit and I could come in and make us school better, you know, it seemed like you'd want to be the one to bring the school up. I think he's saying he would want to be the one to bring the program back. Is that yeah. kind of what he was saying? And hey, listen, yeah. I, I almost said this earlier. As a recruit, right? Right. Bring the program yeah, so. back. And I was going to say this earlier, but the kids that are committing right now before the season, the, the kids that are having faith in this staff, man, right here, big dog, respect, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and listen, I don't blame other kids for waiting. Like, hey, let me see what let me let me let's see what October looks like. Let me see what you look like in October. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I'm 90 percent in, but let me let, let me just get a look. But the kids that are on board right now, Braden Joyner, uh, Terrence Love, presumably Carmelo English. And Jeremiah Cobb, man, much respect to those guys. And yep. I've said it before, man, get you a spot, dude. If you don't like it come October, peace out, son. Go find you. You know, you know, you know Jeffrey, all, these guys were guys that loved Auburn in the first place, too. We've always True. thought that. So, go ahead, Bo. Okay. Um, you think come on. Bo, I think we lost. Wait, wait till you get to Grazel, dude, yeah. and call us back. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, Bo, just go ahead and post your questions in the chat. I think we're losing uh, service, man. We appreciate you, though, Bo. I, I like your persistence. Yes, absolutely. Man. Thank yeah, you for the call. We, and, we, and, and, we, and, no. and it was a good question. I, I do like opening the conversation on these kids getting in and being the guys who want to be a part early of this class and of this change that they believe in. Sure. Uh, Anubis. We got a long list of callers. No, oh, keep them going. Uh, uh, six, you're live. What's, what's going on, fellas? Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Got you. What's going on? This is uh, Brooks. I was actually the first caller. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cherry caller. Popper. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I can't even look at you right now after that. <laughs> I was going to say, I'll wear, the, I'll wear that badge. <laughs> there you uh, go. But, but my question, fellas, so I saw yesterday that um, – what's his name? Committed North Carolina, the, the Hoover guy. Yeah, Dale Miller. Yeah, I saw and, – and obviously, you know, Clay Whedon committed a couple weeks ago to Michigan State. And I know these are guys that, from what I've gathered, they seem like sort of – I hate to use this term, but plan B type guys. And I guess my question is, I mean, is there a chance that the staff could be a little more – aggressive or open to these kind of guys because it's interesting how you see them commit to these kind of places and you're thinking oh man i'm sure they would have jumped in an auburn offer pretty quick and and so i'm just curious with the way things are kind of trending with um some of these potential guys not working out i guess i mean is there a chance you guys think we'll start being more aggressive with these quote-unquote plan b type guys 
Hey, hey Bruce, you. Are, are, are you Anubis? 647? You what? Are you Anubis? The, I don't know if you can see the screen, but Anubis is asking no, basically no. The, the same question. So, we'll, Anubis, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll include you in here. Anubis wants to know, I'm wondering, too, is our staff too optimistic on our chances? Some of these swings have happened so quickly. And I will say this. Uh, when it comes to the offensive line and Jay Head and Cole and all, we've all talked about this on the Shrill Pod, Auburn, Auburn's looking to take a big offensive line class. And this is just my opinion. Dude, I don't know more than Will Friend. I don't know more than anybody up there. I promise you this. I just got an opinion. I got a butthole, too. But um, – Clay Whedon, it, it, this is just my thoughts, man. If he's good enough for Michigan State, he's good enough for a big offensive line class at Auburn. And he loved Auburn. He wanted in. He would have been a fine young man to have in this class. Character out the roof. Yeah. yeah. I, so, am I – I'm – like again, what do I know? But I'm just telling you, from my perspective, Clay Whedon would have had a spot in my class. Yeah, well, you know, Jeffrey, we do a little bit more than reporting at Auburn Live. We we give our opinions on things, and uh, we've said for a while that just from observation, from an observational standpoint, they are ultra selective about who they take. Mm -hmm. Yes, they just are, and offer too. And we're last uh, cycle. I mean, they only took seventeen guys when they needed more, quite frankly, um, in certain places. So, man, you know, I don't see them changing that. I, I think they're going to live and die by it. Yeah, that's that's just the bottom line. I, so so yes, uh, Brooks, gotcha. yeah. Jay Head, do do you agree here? I mean, well, how, you you follow it from uh, as close as anybody, man. Well, how do you feel about that? Do you think they're being too picky, too selective? I think in certain areas, maybe. Now, with regard to, I know you brought up Dell Miller. I feel like J.C. Hart replaced him in the class. We could have probably pressed go on Dell a long time ago, but I don't believe. I think Dale has some size limitations that probably concern the staff. As far as offensive line is concerned, and I'm with Jay Lee here, because you're taking such a deep class that either Ian, excuse me, Ian Jeffrard or Clay Whedon to me made sense to go ahead and pull the trigger there and probably press those guys for a commitment. But I will say this, and I do give, whereas maybe I would have handled it differently. I think you do have to give props to a staff that's willing to stay to the integrity of their board and feel as though, you know what, we're going to start top, work our way down, and we can circle back on these guys if we need to. And I do believe – I believe the window is open for them to circle back on Jeff Hart. I don't think that opportunity is there for Clay Whedon. I think he is completely done, locked up to Michigan State. Unless Mel Tucker leaves and goes somewhere else, that's the only chance that Auburn's got of getting back in on Clay Whedon. But I do think there are other guys that have committed elsewhere – that if Auburn does start to make a move there, I think they can flip them. Will they do that? That's a completely different story, and I just don't know yet. And I, I will uh, let me add this: one. Uh, Anthony James was another guy Auburn passed on, who who a uh, defensive end. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we, I think we said this last. I think we all agree. Anthony James, Auburn could have had him. He, he's a four-star defensive yeah. end from Texas. He was committed to Texas A&M for a while. Suddenly was decommitted. I think you'll see that ranking drop, and I actually posted on the corner uh, our message board on Auburn Live that he would have been a guy that committed to Auburn as a four-star, and then by the first time the rankings are updated in the fall, he'd be dropped to a mid-three-star guy, and everybody would be complaining, but it was really a justified de-ranking, uh, demotion. Uh, but he was not a good fit. Um, he, he was he was not a good fit. I think he'll be, he, he committed to Washington. I think he's a Pac-12 guy. Um, my thoughts and some of the guys that I talked to up at Auburn – believed he would he would have been a guy who came in and after a year transferred away. So uh, I, I was okay with that one. I, I, I've been okay with every one of them, except I, if you're going to take six offensive linemen, in my opinion. Now, at the time, you got Bo Hughley, you got Rockwell's McKeldery, I think um, you know you, had, you you got some big names. And they're still on the board, don't get me wrong. Yeah, Clay Whedon, I guess, you know, I got a soft spot in my heart for that kid. I, I'm with you. So I do you too, know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm probably – Partial to him, so that's probably not fair. But Clay Whedon is in my class uh, right now. He's committed to Auburn right now. If 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 I was running the show, yeah, I like Clay too. Instead, I'm a freaking YouTuber. So go figure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brooks, we appreciate your call, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, no, appreciate appreciate you guys. Thank you all. Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks, man. All right, let's see. Hey, Two five one. You're live. What's up, Bellas? Hey, what's up? How about you? This is uh, I, I got a two five one number, but I'm actually calling from the uh, metropolis of Coleman, Alabama. It's, it's Stephen Queef. 
Hey. Steve right. Queef. There's that username. Yeah, Cole's been wanting <laughs> him to call in for a long time. Yeah. I'm telling you. All right. Hey, Stephen, uh, uh, what year did you graduate Coleman? Uh, 2012. Hey. Oh, you just now getting hair on your peaches. 2012. <laughs> That's my class, yeah, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Says Cole, who's got more facial hair than me. <laughs> All right, Queef, what you got for us, big dog? I was just curious. I mean, and I don't think it's a, a secret that the Jimmy Reigns of the world aren't on board with Larson. And so, in like in the NI, in today's NIL, when you get, you've got these four star quarterbacks signing for hell. Nine million dollars. I mean, is that a detriment when your big dogs won't play along with what your coach has got trying to sell? Jay Head, it's a huge detriment if that's in fact the case. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is what we don't know right now with regard to Auburn and IL. I think there's some ambiguity surrounding it. I haven't been able to put my arms around it just yet and be able to say, "Hey, X Y Z is not contributing to this. This is what our fund is. This is what we match up." With. In comparison to other schools. I will say this to this point. What I do know about uh, the NIL game at Auburn is, is that players on the actual team are being taken care of, that they are being compensated for their name, image, and likeness, um, and that they've done a pretty good job of trying to market and create deals for those players. I don't feel as though to this point that we have been overly aggressive in the recruiting aspect mm. of the Auburn of the NIL game. Will that change? I just don't know. But I can tell you this, that friction between the head coach and its major power players and boosters is never a good thing. You need everybody to be on the same page. You need everybody to be aligned with one another and what exactly you want in the direction of your team moving forward. Will that ever happen at Auburn? I honestly don't know, brother. Again, and, and, and can't even imagine a world in which Auburn live, looks like that. But that's exactly what we need. Um and will we realize that we don't need to cut our nose off to spite our face? That's what I'm hoping cooler heads will prevail and money will be there. If I can get an answer with regard to Auburn NIL status and who's an active donor or what the fund looks like, I'll try to put that information on the board as soon as I can. And, and listen, there are efforts being made. I, I know the staff at Auburn really is behind an eight ball when it comes to the NIL game. I don't think Auburn has a chance with guys that just signed the 7.1, whatever the hell it was, million-dollar deal. I don't think Auburn won't even is interested in guys like that, at least that type of guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I know, it man. Like it. I listen, I know I've talked to a couple of big boosters. last. Uh, we talked about this last week, but NIL, some big boosters came up. They met with the coaches last week. They want to get on the same page. They need to get on the same page. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants – everybody there wants Auburn to succeed. And I, I know I talked to a couple of them, and they were like just – you know, what, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? And, and the coaches were there and they, they had presentations ready, man. They're, 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 so they're definitely taking steps forward. I think there's still a long way to go, though. Still a long way to go, man. There's some stubborn uh, people. Let, let me say this, Jeffrey. I, if, if the concern is, will it ever happen at Auburn? Will they ever catch up? I don't think they would spend so much money on that facility they're building right now if they weren't willing to you know, eventually play the game on that front. Am I wrong for, for thinking that? No, I and, I, and I'll take you a different direction on that, Cole. I think that that facility is probably going to be the last big thing you're going to see on Auburn's campus and that you're going to start to see some of that money that's being earmarked for facilities from donations is going to start to being pushed into an NIL fund. I yeah. honestly believe yeah. the talent acquisition is going to move to the forefront as far as how money is allocated from certain power players. Yeah. The thing that gets me about this NIL and, and the big guys like this is it uh, if, if if they're holding back or making trouble or causing waves or, or, or stalling or whatever it is because it's personal with Brian Harson and uh, we, we know what happened when he was hired. We know what happened this past February. Um, there are people, money people, that don't want to see him personally succeed. And if you take a step back and realize that – he is Auburn right now. He is Auburn football right now. If you don't want him to succeed, you don't want Auburn football to succeed. Yeah, yeah, that's and, right. And, and I know their egos, man, and I don't know what it's like to be a, a multimillionaire I, <laughs> or have that much control over something. But if you take a step back, man, Brian Harson right now is Auburn football. Either you want him to succeed 
you want Auburn football to succeed, and you're going to be willing to do anything you can to help him, Auburn football, succeed. Uh, if you're not, you're just hurting. You know, doing nothing right now is hurting Auburn. It, yep. It's hurting Auburn. And, I, I, and I'm going to start – I'm, I'm like Jay Headman. I, I want to be more well versed in that subject. I want to know what 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 factor that is in these recruits' commitments. Like on an official visitor, I like how does that? I want to know just as what, much as you guys do. Like how how you see the facilities, you meet with the coaches, you see the defensive scheme, you see where you fit, the depth chart, you're talking to the coaches, you're going out with the chicks, and, and, and eating good food. You know, at what point does the kid go? What about the NIL? <laughs> and here's the thing, and this is what I will say as far as what I do know about NIL. The coaches cannot have that conversation with them right. with regard to actual amounts that players can be paid. They can probably reference that this person has an NIL deal and this is what, you know what I mean, is involved in that, but they can't actually have that conversation or facilitation of a conversation of making an NIL deal. Yeah. So – do they get introduced to somebody or are they told to contact somebody? I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't exactly know how that works or does Auburn NIL take it upon themselves or whoever the collective is at Auburn right now, that's going to be pulling the strings. Do they reach out to those players that are actually visiting Auburn? I'm with you, Jeffrey. There's so much ambiguity with it and how it works. Um, and I think there has to be some because it can't be very clear for people yeah. like and you to broadcast out like, Hey, this is exactly how it goes. Or the NCAA <laughs> is down there launching yeah. an investigation like they were at Miami not too long ago with my man John Ruiz. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it, it, let me – is there going to be a point where one of our questions at the exit interview for an official visit is, did you talk to NIL and what kind of deal are they offering? <laughs> Maybe. Is that going to be a, a question in the near future? Is that going to be part of our stories? Could be. I think it could. You're probably looking two years down the line when everything gets streamlined at the national level and there's some kind of federal guidance or federal regulation put into place. I don't think you're going to get anything until obviously you have a transition within Congress and a new president's in place. But at some point, there has to be some federal mandate or legislation to put everybody on the same page. And once we get that, I think you'll get a clearer picture of what it looks like. You know, okay, so you got a top three and you're deciding Friday. All right, here's the reasons you want to, you're choosing Auburn, Alabama, and Georgia. And is part of that going to be in the NIL? Like, okay, yeah, you know, Auburn's offering me, you know, whatever. I don't even know how it works. You know, freaking Mama Goldberg's, you know, Milo's tea or whatever the hell it is. Is that going to be part of the equation? And I'm, I'm very curious to see how this plays out. Uh, but good stuff there, Queefy. Uh, BK wants me to share and uh, like, like and subscribe, BK. It's not share. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if he wants us to put it out on Twitter. He, hell, he knows more than I do, BK. Uh, anyway, Auburn Live YouTube channel. Is it channel? Yeah, it's channel. Yeah. Subscribe <laughs> and like it, dude. It helps us, I think. It you does. Know, that yeah, it does. But 615, you're live. Nashville. Nashville. Did we lose Nash Vegas? <laughs> 615. We're here. Oh, gotcha. Got him. Little George. Little George. Little George, you sound like you got some people locked in your basement or something. <laughs> Don't he? Uh, hey, well, I'm just kidding, dude. What's up? Basement. Oh, shit, what? Um, <laughs> we hear a lot about the upcoming season influencing recruiting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know this is more of a recruiting show, but what are you guys thinking about the season? I mean, I made the mistake of going to the Penn State game and then following it up by the going to the debacle that was the Mississippi State game and the wheels came off. But um, I don't know, man. I have a good feeling. I'll, I'll hang up. Little George, first of all, I want to apologize. Please don't come hunt me down. Uh, <laughs> but I, th I think we're all I think we're all cautiously optimistic. I think the first half of the season, Auburn should make a lot of noise. I, I feel like. Seven to eight wins is very doable. What, what's the ceiling here, Cole? What, what's your ceiling here? Best be, best case scenario for Albert, realistically. Uh, man. Regular best season case, wins. Regular best season case wins. scenario would probably be eight to nine wins. Yeah. Low, you know the. I don't think they go below six. I don't. I don't think they would go that far below. But it's you know, 
anything's on the table, it seems like, because of your away games with Georgia and Alabama. And if you drop any of those early games, it could get it could get ugly. But we've said a couple times when we've talked about these games, and I, I put a big board post out today about the Penn State game, and it sounds like people are feeling pretty good about that one. And that's one of those early games that can really, um, you know, launch you into some momentum with the, with the games that follow. Uh, you know, you have LSU after that one too. Uh, Arkansas, Ole Miss are some other SEC games that follow. I mean, Arkansas and Ole Miss have not presented too much of an issue for Auburn in the past. Is it different now? I mean, now that the, the portal's such a big thing, we'll find out how much that makes a difference, right? I agree. It, it, and I'm with you. I think actually probably top end, if you count a bowl game win, is 9 to 10. That's okay. probably your ceiling. I don't think anybody on this show can sit here and say you're going to walk into Bryant-Denny Stadium or you're going to go into Athens no. and you're going to be able to go toe-to-toe with those teams right now. Now, maybe our team believes that, and I hope to God that they do. You know what I mean? And let's give some credit here to Justin Hokinson, um, who had a, a post not too long ago that talked about the, co- had the cohesion amongst this team and how they bonded and how they're on the same page and they are pulling together in the same direction. Can that transcend talent level in certain games? And I'm not talking about within your starters or even your two deep, but what happens when you have some injuries? What happens when you have some illness? You know what I mean? Those, when those guys that are not necessarily mainstream players, when they get put into action, how do they respond? Do we have the overall depth we need to get to that point? That's what I don't know and what we can't answer. But what I do like is the fact that you have a coaching staff and a team that's on the same page. I like that you have a quarterback that fits the scheme. You've gone out and you've added a playmaker in Coy Moore that can be a quarterback's best friend. How much better is the offensive line in year two in the same scheme? And can the defense do what I think they're capable of doing, which is being a top five defense in the SEC? If all of those things come together, I think you're looking at about eight wins. And if this staff gets to eight wins in the regular season, they've earned their paycheck and then some. I I think eight regular season wins is my cap. I think uh, seven is my floor. I think seven to eight wins is uh, – I know that's not a lot, a big discrepancy. I'm, I'm not fooling myself. Uh, Alabama, Georgia, 0-2. Oh uh, make it a game. But, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and these guys can. Uh, then you've got yeah. A&M, LSU, Arkansas, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Missouri. Right. You need to find three to four wins in there. Four wins get you to eight, right? Right. Four, four non-conference games. And I think nine is the ceiling with a bowl win. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm, I, I don't. The, the uh, over and under for win total at, uh, out of Vegas is six and a half. I'm taking over and not I agree. twice about it. Yeah, I think I'd take. I think I'd take the over as well. I see seven. That's kind of what yeah. I'm predicting. I, I see mm-hmm. seven wins on that schedule. But this is what I also know is that if this team gets rolling and we get five and zero, oh, Jordan Hare is absolutely electric. And you've yeah, got you, you have to account for that. You yeah, do. A&M is coming to your house. Arkansas is coming to your house. We haven't lost at Ole Miss in God knows how long, and we owe Mississippi State an ass beating after last year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, if, yeah. you know, I don't know how all that syncs up because obviously our schedule, the way it lays out, is extremely difficult. Okay, are we going to be beat up at certain times? Are we going to have players sick? You, you just don't know those things. And that's why I probably scale back expectation to seven regular season wins. But look, yeah, I like this team. I do too. And realistically, my best guess is seven and five with an eight win bowl game. I yep. think that's being realistic. Uh, and I don't, I don't expect them to do any worse than that. To be honest with you, I'm with you, Jeffrey. That's my floor. My, my ceiling's probably eight. My floor is mm-hmm. probably seven. I, I'm yep. with you there. Get find a win. One more win, and you're at eight and four going to a bowl game with a chance to win nine. Yeah. Yep. Uh, who was that? Was that, was that Little George? That was Little George, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey, Little calls. George, we appreciate wow. you, big dog. Yeah. Uh, three callers on the line. All y'all hang tight. We're going to get to every one of y'all. But 205, you're live. What's going on, fellas? What's up? What's up? Uh, hanging around. No hey. Mo- it- Screen name of not an insider. Uh, there, hey. I don't know y'all have never heard my voice. <laughs> I haven't, brother, but I'm glad to hear it. Look at yeah. y'all's screen. Y'all, y'all aren't a pretty, pretty thing to look at. 
Bullshit. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> hey, don't talk about don't talk about Jay no. Hill like that. Hey, <laughs> easy, Cole. Just for this birthday now. <laughs> No, nah, I just wanted to come in. I, I wanted to call in. And, uh, uh, Auburn's cast a wide net. They had to cast a wide net in the recruiting search. Uh, I know a lot of guys on the board. Uh, they've been a little disappointed. They've seen guys going somewhere else. But I think Auburn's done a good job casting a wide net, not leaving any options off the table. And I think they're going to do a good job. I think we're going to end up in the top 15 in recruiting. I think we're going to fill those offensive line needs. And, and like y'all said, it comes down, what are we going to do on the field? And I'm with you guys. I, I think we're going to win seven, eight, nine ball games. I think we're going to have a winning season. Uh, I, I'm not the guy that's going to sit here and say we're going to win five games. We're a better ball team than that. We're more loaded than that. Uh, but, Lord, I, I enjoy listening to you guys. You, you do a great job. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to two commitments this weekend. And we'll see how it goes early next week. Not an insider. We appreciate you on the board, man. You're a great poster. We really appreciate you. Appreciate the call. And I, I think – I think – you it, the, for the ones who were thinking taking the over of the win total, I think it shows. I, man, I know what happened last second half of last. I know how many close games Auburn lost last year. Yep, one 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 score on every game except for Georgia, or at least that's the way it felt. Yeah. I've got confidence in these guys in year two. They're going they're going to win half of those games this year. I've got confidence. I I, I think I think they're better coaches than recruiters. I think they're very good coaches. Yeah, I really do. That, um, you know, it's a rough time of year to be a better coach than recruiter, but <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> it might be true though. And I talked about that in one of my unfiltered thoughts that they they seem to be putting a lot of emphasis on football right now, and they put an emphasis on football when guys officially visit. Mm -hmm. They come back saying, "Man, we talk ball a lot." A lot. Brock Glenn, Brock Glenn said, "Hey, we had like four film meetings, man." Yeah, and some guys love that. Some guys are like, uh, you know, I want to chill. I think Big Cat Weekend coming up is going to be chill. I don't think they're going to go into the football too much, really. And that's what they were going to do. That was the plan there. I, I love the structure of this staff, Jay Head. I think you can attest to this as well. With with Harson and, and and his boys Schmetting and Keysaw, they're all freaking ball, dude. They're they're, they're not going to walk into a room and captivate people with their glowing personality. No. You, they're gonna walk into a damn film room though, and, and and teach a class, but but that's why you've got guys like Christian Robinson, Rock Bell, and Tony, Jimmy Brumball, Zach Etheridge, Cadillac Williams, uh, Ike Hilliard is more of a ball guy, but he's pretty cool too, man. He can relate. I think that that's the structure of this staff it lines up perfectly for a great mix of ball and recruiting. Will friend, Just Will friend, very relatable. Bradbadale, I'm gonna plug Harz's podcast here for those that haven't gone and listened to the c rob interview oh yeah the will friend interview that just came out please go listen i mean will friend sounds like he should have been on pat Dye's staff in the 1980s like that's exactly how i picture him is basically you know what i mean his former offensive line coach that was i guess his mentor that worked under pat for years i mean it's just it, really great personality but i'm, I'm with you I, I do think that they're better coaches probably than recruiters on this staff but that's not a bad thing, especially if you're winning, because then winning sells itself. That's what it's all about, right? That's it what is. it all boils down to anyway. 100%. I mean, you think Nick Saban's just a fantastic recruiter, or is he a fantastic recruiter because he wins football games? Probably <laughs> exactly. a combination of the two. Exactly. Well, you know what? For those three top guys, yeah, the, the two coordinators. I'm sorry, not an insider. What did you say, buddy? More recruiters added to the staff with the changes that the NCAA's got coming Every guy out there on the field doesn't have to be able to recruit. Uh, sure, you want two, three, four guys that are knockout guys that kids love, but I think you're going to see the landscape of that completely change over the next four or five years. I'm with you. I, I think you're talking about the transformation committee and the, and the changes they're thinking about making as far as moving delegation down to the conferences. And the SEC is given the consideration of allowing more guys to go on the road and to be active recruiters than just yeah. the on the field staff. If they do that, expect us to hire the best on the field coaches we can, and then you go out and hire a bunch of guys like Trevon Reed that can relate to these kids and bring them in, man. Get get me the Jimmys and Joes. I got the X's and O's. There you yeah. go. Right, right. Hey, we appreciate you not an insider. Get off here. Get a baby to sleep. <laughs> Good luck with that. I hear you on that, brother. Zach, we clear? Nope, we got two more. Okay. All right. Good. Two, five, six. You're live. 
Hey guys, it's uh Jason Wood from Fort Payne, Alabama. What was your name? I'm sorry. Chase Woods, the one you called me out. Chase oh, Woods. Shit. Yeah, Chase. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, the, he's the mechanical engineer. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, man? Good about y'all guys. Happy birthday, Cole. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. What's up, Chase? Hey, so I got a two-parter. Um, I, I saw that Rusal and Smith are a package deal, but Rusal seems more interested than – Smith, uh, but I feel like if we win those eight or nine games that we talk, we probably have a chance with Russo. Well, cool. uh, you hear your boys? Yeah, man, I, I spent a little time with them last week. Uh, honestly, left there thinking they really do like Auburn, might have grown up like an Auburn. Um, of course, things change when you get into the recruiting part of things, and, you know, NIL deals are flying, whatever is going on in the recruitments. Um, but, look, I mean – that, that was the comment James made to me. He said, look, I just want him back to old Auburn. And I think Harson's doing that. He told me that. He thinks Harson's going to bring him back to old, old Auburn, and that's why he's hearing him out. Because, And I asked him, what does old Auburn mean? He said, old Auburn means beating Bama. It means winning the big game. <coughs> um, so he has confidence in Harson. Uh, and, again, it's, it's, it's back to the show me thing. you got to show me. we got to get to the part on the field where you show me you can do it. Um, eight or nine wins, is that enough? Maybe. Depends on who you beat. I think mm-hmm. it depends on who you beat. I had an interesting conversation with regard to those two. Um, and what I will say is is that I do think that they have full intention of playing together. I don't think they're going to end up at, a, at opposite schools. And I think Quay Russo is the one that's going to pick a school and James is going to follow him. I would say that that is my read on the situation right now. I do think we got to show confidence on the field. And I think for whoever's making that decision, the money does have to be right off the field. I don't mm-hmm. think there's any shape, form, or fashion, any way that they're taking a subpar NIL deal with any school that they sign with. Better have your shit together before they announce. Correct. Mm-hmm. And, and, and good for them. They Two five-star guys, top two in the state. Man, they, they ought to be able to, uh, to, to, to profit. Agreed. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. With them being as high-star, I could see NIL being very high uh, – priority for them mm-hmm. also the second thing i want to say for queefy he said coleman 2012 on fort Payne 2012 i remember y'all had a kid spencer region in 2011 yeah spencer oh. came, came to fort Payne. y'all were ranked you know top five in the state and we curb stomped y'all 36 oh <laughs> we've we've got queefed <laughs> Spencer Region, a, a, a Auburn commitment that flipped to Alabama, was there not? Yeah. No, he ended up in Clemson. He wouldn't. Clemson. Clemson. Oh, shit. Shape. He had to go to Clemson. <laughs> yeah, I remember the name. Yeah. Big old cornbread mother. Yeah, big, old, big old dude. Yeah. yeah. Ended up crying on National Signing Day because Bama wouldn't take his commitment. Mm-hmm. And Auburn wouldn't take him back. Yeah. Wow. wow. Mm. You got to love Chase. recruiting, man. You got to love it. Chase was, uh, I've told you before, I'm a big Eider man myself. <laughs> Eider, that's right. Let's see, we got two two more callers here. Three, three, four, you're live. Hey, guys, this is, uh, this is Ishmael. I'm a, uh, I'm a translator for Dong Dong. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, boy. All right. Very good. Bring it on. Hey, Hey, yeah, yeah. Dong Dong want me to send you a big how about you. How about you, Dong Dong? Okay. Yes, sir. He, uh, he, he can't be with us tonight, man. He's off at the, at the South Mongolian Grand Trampoline Showdown. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be back on the board sometime soon. Okay. <laughs> but uh, he sent me a list of talking points, you know, that he kind of wanted me to hit and go over. Okay. And uh, so, if y'all don't mind, I'm I'm just gonna express my man Dong's thoughts on on the air right now. Take that Dong away, please do. I like please it, Ishmael. Go for it, brother. All right, man. Hey, first, uh, and this has been a, a common topic on the board. It's never been easier to negative recruit against Auburn right now. You know, people are really selling that that unstable ground that Harson's on, and I think like y'all hit on earlier, it's gonna take a few wins. To, to stabilize that, for people to feel more comfortable. And, and so I really think the, the visits to home games are going to be way more critical than even these visits to campus right now. Agreed. Okay. Um, I would not argue that. 
you know, they mess around and start off five and oh, the script could be flipped completely. I agree. Uh, yep. You know, alluded to it earlier, you got a coach that used to be on the staff at a competing school that uh is pumping a lot of negative juice out there right now with some behind the scenes smoke. And uh, you know, that that could be I don't want to say conversational, but interesting is as you play on a few key targets. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, Auburn uh, Clemson, dare I say Clemson flavor, especially for some D linemen. Yeah, definitely. There you go. You sprinkle that orange on it, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. hey, uh, with Brock, man, <clears throat> how much of it his recruitment do you think is affected by the Auburn staff's perception of Holden Garner? I mean, it's hard for a guy that wants to play to come in behind a freshman who's really highly thought of. Not much. I'm going to be honest with you on that one, Ishmael. I don't think that the Holden Gurner situation is really affecting Brock Glenn. I think it's more of him wanting to know that this staff is going to be in place and the fact that other schools that are probably considered counterparts to Auburn have now come in place, schools like LSU, schools like Ohio State, obviously a traditional top 15 type program. I think that's probably more what's going on here, though I'm extremely high on Holdy Goldie, as they call him. Um, yeah, I, Goldie. I think he's going to be fantastic, <laughs> man. I, I really do. I was awesome. very impressed with what I saw in the spring game from him. Really, man. You know, uh, all the schools that are offering him now with Auburn, Ohio State, you know, um, other schools talking to him that are big schools. I, there's really not an ideal quarterback situation in any of those schools. Yeah, I was going to say everybody's got that, right? Yeah. I mean, hell, Ohio so, State's got the number one quarterback for 2024. Cole, did I, did I say that right last time? Yes, right. uh, Dominique Raul, uh, R- yeah, Raola. 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 Name. Yeah. Who, interestingly enough, his dad was an all-pro center for like 13 years in the league. I mean, it, doesn't it, yeah. Florida State already have a quarterback committed? They do, but Parsons has yeah. got to go out the door. I mean, it's, okay. I don't think he's overly comfortable with them trying to bring in two quarterbacks. Okay. Ishmael, you still there, man? I'll on this a little bit. Dude, how about the juice in the building right now? I know some of y'all have been around a little bit. There, uh, there's a lot of good juice coming out of the athletic complex, the football facility specifically right now. Yep. Yep. I'd agree with that. Now, Ishmael, what does Dong Dong think with regard to the juice? Does he think it's enough that they're on the same page or that in that cohesion will lead to wins? Or does he feel like the talent level is not there to necessarily get to that eight wins, maybe even nine wins. What does is, what is Dong Dong think? Hold on, let, let me translate this for a second. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Dong Dong, for all you listeners, is, uh, he's Chinese. He's a uh, he, gold medalist trampoline. You know, if health, health is going to be key because the talent is there, especially in some key positions, but the depth is not. Okay. Fair. Yeah. But yeah. – Everybody but, uh, stays healthy. He like he likes Auburn. Yeah, I'm sorry, Dog, man. Dog, if you didn't know, man, is absolutely fascinated with Sunny Lee. Like that's the old <laughs> Auburn fandom originally. She's my she's my niece. <laughs> uh, hey, last thing, we'll talk a little a little. He wants to talk a little X's and O's for a minute. You hit on on some critical games last year, Jay Lee, where. It was one and two score games. Auburn kind of fell apart. He thinks Schmed is going to play a lot more man and pressure in critical situations, i.e. the end of the Iron Bowl, i.e. the second half of Mississippi State game. You know, mm. that could be a thing that, that changes that win trajectory by one or two down the stretch. Absolutely. Yep. That's Cold why I added, I added a few more sacks to the total. Auburn was sixth in sacks in the SEC last season. I think they'll be in the top five this year. And I'm with Dong on that. I think what you're going to see is press man, though. I think we played some man last year, but we were in a lot of off man. I think you're going to see more press man and us try to jam and disrupt the line of scrimmage. I agree with that. Man, I, as much yeah, as a lot, lot of off man, a lot of pattern match, didn't really yep. disrupt routes. Yeah. Yep. As much as I like Derek Mason as a man, I feel like he cost Auburn a couple of games last year, and uh, I feel like I feel like Schmitty's a better exit to know, probably better game caller uh, and i'm just it's i mean it's just a you know it's just your preference do you like a bend don't break or do you like no, to um risk uh, no risk a big play or, I, I you know high risk high reward mate i think mason kind of still thought he was at vandy playing with vandy athletes for you know <laughs> kind yeah. of program that way to 
prevent the big play, slow the game down, and shrink it. And he didn't yep. have to do that at all. I don't know if you have the depth to be the bend and don't break, right? It, it is get hard. These guys off the field. It is hard to reprogram yeah. yourself. I, I, that is a good point, um, Ishmael. But uh, hey, anyway, guys, Don mm-hmm. said he loves the show, loves the site. I appreciate y'all hearing me out, man. War Eagle, have a good night. Kanishiwa, bitches. <laughs> I think that's Japanese, Yeehaw. actually. That is Japanese. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> <laughs> Nihau, my man, big dog. We got one. We got one last caller here. All right, man. Good, good stuff, Ishmael. Two oh five. You're live. Hey, are we, are we live here? We are yeah. live, son. We're live. Awesome. I got a little delay on the phone to computer. Uh, guys, guys it's, it's Auburn. It's Auburn memes calling. Hey, Auburn what's up, Auburn buddy? memes. Hey. Well, we got we're royalty on the line here. Yeah, we do. This is my first. This is my first time ever calling into anything, actually. <laughs> All right. So, a little bit of a little bit of a rookie to this. Y'all just. Jump we are too, big dog. Hey, hey, it's all right. We've all had a fine bomb moment here. Go ahead, brother. I haven't poisoned anything yet. Okay, <laughs> that's good. So, that's my first encounter. But I want to ask you guys what what do y'all want to talk about? Because I got some things to talk about. I was record or nil. Y'all pick. I got I got some things. You you you're on the team. You, I mean, you're talking team stuff. Yeah, yeah, team stuff. I'm not on the team, no. I'm, I'm, I'm fat. Okay. Uh, let's go record if you're giving us an option. Yeah. Record, okay. So this has been the discussion. And I've been tweeting about this a little bit, trying to get all the people. So the thought here is, is there a scenario where – and this is my what-if scenario. I'll ask you guys to pick. Is there a scenario where Auburn could win seven games and be in better shape than if they won nine. And when I say won nine, I'm talking lucky games. They beat a team that they shouldn't have beaten, but that other team had a bunch of injuries, referee calls, et cetera, et cetera. Arkansas on this 2020. Yeah. I I think I know where you're going with this, Memes. And what I will say is, is that, are we playing close games or do we look like we're getting blown out in those games and not competitive with our biggest opponents? Are we going to Tuscaloosa and getting completely blown out? Or are we going there and we're playing our guts out and it's a situation where you can see improvement on the field? I do think that possibility exists at going seven and five, but every game you play, you're close. You know, you're a, a score, a field goal here, a touchdown there, and you're really seeing that progress and development. You're getting quarterback play from Zach Calzada that exceeds what you got last year from Bo Nix. You're trending in the right direction. So I 100% see the point that you're coming from, and I think that 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 future absolutely exists. Is that what's going to happen? I have no idea, but the possibility is definitely there. Yeah, I think I said that on a podcast too. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, I think I said that on a podcast. Uh, I'll let you go. I'll let you go. <laughs> It's tough, ain't it? I mean, memes, memes. All right, memes. You go ahead. Jesus, one more, one more time. Do I go under someone else? You no, are. You go, go ahead, memes. Okay, my bad, guys. It's, it's the delay. It's killing me. Like that. Oh yeah, that's good. So, in this scenario, like let's say it's at seven and five, but just tons of stuff turned in the right direction. Do you think enough people can take salt in that, or do you think they're just going to be like, "Oh, we discussed, we went backwards, and just that." Bad juju in the air. If it does not help with recruiting, then people will not be happy about it. Yes. If it helps with recruiting, Beautiful people thing. will be happy about it. I Simple agree. With that. That, and, that's the measuring stick. Because seven and five, but you've got a top ten recruiting class, everybody is going to give you a pass on this year. Seven and five, and you got a top 25 recruiting class. Yeah. Things look a little bit more dire than they would otherwise. Recruiting can get you a lifeline. It 100% can. It can buy you a year. Sure. If people feel like there's progress on the field and there's also progress in the talent acquisition standpoint, yeah, it, it, it's it's two totally different looks. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Top 15 recruiting class. Where's, that, where, where's the line cut off that we're like, 
this is South Florida where this is not. Uh, under six and a half. I, and I don't know. Listen, I don't know that. I don't know that there's no, a I'm number. Recruiting, I'm at recruiting. He said, what's, what's an acceptable recruiting class, Jay? Oh. Oh, I was – you You talking about yeah. the floor, like the bottom, the worst case that he gets a pass? Like, like yeah, if it's seven and five, if uh, we're top 15 recruiting class or if, like we're top 25, like, where's that number where you feel okay about it to where it starts trending? I don't know. I think top 15 – because Auburn had eight – Auburn was 18 last year and did nothing for the needle as far as the fans are concerned, right? I mean, Auburn finished six and seven with a number eighteen recruiting class. If you're finishing seven and five this year, you probably want to be in that top fifteen. You probably want to be in the top half of the SEC. You probably want to have some of these big dogs picking you over some of the other big dogs. You just hit the nail on the head, Jay Lee. I think it's even more important about where you finish in the SEC than mm-hmm. where you finish nationally overall. Because how are you doing against teams that you see as your as, as your equal? You know what I mean? Like, it, there's nobody at Auburn that wants to look inferior to Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, A and M. We want to be on par with those guys and in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Forget the Ohio States and the Clemsons and all that, dude. Yeah. Show me where Auburn's. Sh- show me where Auburn's finishing in the SEC West. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Can't Top finish half. behind. Can't finish behind really Arkansas. Don't miss. No. But I will say this, as far as optimism for this year, the reason I'm optimistic optimistic is because of the, the losses last year. I know that sounds weird, but I feel like Auburn will be a couple of plays better in every game this year. Memes, you still there? Wild, wild I'm still here, yeah. I, I, this is a wild turn, and I'll talk about this too soon to be looking at 2023 and kind of wondering, like, there's a lot of – even they could have a pretty good year here. There's still a lot of pieces of this for next year. Does that have anybody a little nervous? You know, uh, in the past, I would say, yes, Auburn's losing so much. But now with the transfer portal, yeah, and, yeah. I, 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 I'm okay with it. I mean, you look at it right now on paper and you, you get nervous because there's so many offensive linemen leaving and there's going to be a lot of spots where you already don't have great, great depth anyway. So – it's going to have to be, you know, a great portal class, I think. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, don't, I don't see them taking 30 guys anymore. I mean, at one time I was thought, well, you know, restrictions are off. Maybe they will, but they're still being selective. So, I, yeah, it's got to be a big Especially at the class. offensive line. Memes, uh, let me throw this in there, man. The offensive line, the reason Auburn struggled yeah. this year with the, the transfer portal and the offensive line because they had zero – immediate playing time available for these guys with one to two years left. Now they're going to have an entire offensive line vacated at the end of this year for guys that with one or two years left that looks, looks at the depth chart and goes, oh, there's a redshirt sophomore that's never played before. Say less. I'm in. Do you, uh, you, do you think they just go out there and they basically all but promise, hey, you're going to yeah. – No, I don't think they promise them playing time. But I, I, they say, look, this here's the opportunity. You, you do your own math. I'm not going to guarantee you anything. I'm going to guarantee you an opportunity to start, to win the starting job. And that's what – and I'm sure they could say that with anybody in any year at any position. But this year, these guys are looking at the depth chart going, man, these are all returning seniors. That's that's actually something Quay Russo mentioned to me that he appreciated. They haven't told him, hey, you're the best edge out there. You're going to start because we don't have depth. They said, you still got to come earn it, dude. It means something to him. They Ruben like Bain. That. Ruben Bain said the same thing. Um, Ruben Bain, the edge from Miami, who I think, man, the, the mentality of Ruben Bain means – I don't know if you read that article or, or, or seen what he said after his official visit back in the middle of the month, but he was like, man, these cats are ready to work, and that's what I want to do. I want somebody going to work my ass off. Yeah. I, I don't want anything given to me. I want to work. Good stuff. It was great stuff, and I think that's why I'll be – it's going to be tough to get him out of Miami. I don't want to change the subject too much, but he's another dude at edge. Yeah. Um that I'll be keeping a club. What are you smiling about over there, Jay Head? <laughs> because Ruben Bain just named Alabama as leader. <laughs> oh. <laughs> are you serious? Publicly? Yes. Wow, you don't see that much anymore. His nickname is no. Hurricane, guys. <laughs> what did he do? That's just fake. like in the last hour? No, no, no. Like within the last day. He, oh, he hell. came on a visit to Tuscaloosa. It's like your first name being Auburn or something. Yeah, right? <laughs> you know? 
But I will agree that Ruben Bain fits the mentality of exactly what the staff wants. That's what I want. I do think that they're in the thick of it with him. Whether he named Alabama his leader right now or not, there's still things that could shake out. Boy, that is just – that's very rare these days for guys to come – you know, it used to be who leads. Oh, here's who leads. Now, man, it's hard to get that out of somebody. He might as well go ahead and commit. That's all it means. That's uh, what I get is usually – I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. (laughs) That's what I get. (laughs) Memes, what – what else you got, big dog? All right, so I, I will pull, I'll come to NIL. But my my next thing I'd want to get to. Obviously, Auburn's got two guys in the quarter. Definitely, just the not the number you'd want this week or two. Hopefully, we can see that trend up. What do y'all think would be a realistic number it going into the season of Guys actually committed. Where should they be? At the, well, I guess what are the milestones? Hey, we need to have at least this many guys at this day, or we're going to be sweating a little bit. Okay, we, we, yeah, there you go. We, oh. I, I was told by somebody that I trust very much that this staff wanted to be on the edge of double digits, double digit commitments rolling into the season. That's what they thought that they could potentially get somewhere between eight to 10 quality prospects in this class that could help with peer recruiting. And, you know, I don't know if you heard the previous caller, but help with those initial home games as far as working other recruits in the stands, making sure that they're letting them know that Auburn's the place they want to be. You need help doing that. Two guys is not going to be enough as far as getting in other players' ears and helping this coaching staff recruit. So they are hoping – of the guys that they really like to get somewhere between eight to 10 and have those guys at every home game, if at all possible, making sure that they're representing Auburn the right way. You you almost go as far to say for perception's sake, do you, you you need an offensive lineman, another one in the boat really to, to make people feel more comfortable, you know, because if you don't put another offensive lineman or if you don't get one in, in your commitment list, uh, Signing seven just seems like such an uphill climb or five, whatever the number is, right? Awesome. <laughs> A little J head. Right yeah, man. <laughs> um, I had one. Uh, damn it. And biceps throw me off back there, J head. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, oh, are you talking about getting an offensive line, another offensive line committed? Who, what if he's committed to Georgia? Man, wouldn't that be big? Sure would. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it would be big. If we're talking about perception, right? Right. Flipping flipping a a, a commitment from Georgia would be, uh, perception-wise, huge. Yep. That's about as big as it gets there. Zach, are we clear on the phone? Memes, I'm sorry, dude. We appreciate you. Guys, no. Appreciate y'all having fun. Next one. Uh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Memes, we got to have you back on, brother, when you can be on the stream and, and you can ask these questions, man. I think you're fantastic. Yeah, you do. Great really questions. Appreciate. Great questions. Yeah. All the things that you do for Auburn as far as putting good information out there on the Twitter space and everything else, man. So thank you. Big up. We got two more callers. All right. Let's hit them up real quick. And we got to get Pink out, out of here, man. He, four, he, he's, four, seven, zero. You're live. Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's uh, Sparks again this week. Sparks. Uh, here in Atlanta. Yes, sir. Hey, what's going on, guys? Happy birthday, Pink. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Um, just two two quick ones, real quick. Uh, first one, um, you, we just mentioned uh, perception. It doesn't really seem like Carson's big on perception. You would think if that was part of it. Uh, Jeffrard or Wheaton would be part of the class. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, and then the uh, the second one was thinking about the schedule. Who who other than Georgia or Alabama really scares? You? I feel A&M. like I'm about every team in their spring game, and there's not really a team out there that I was overly impressed with. I think A&M, from a talent standpoint, Jeffrey's right, probably scares you some. But I do like that we get them at home. 
I do like that they're breaking in a new quarterback this year. Regardless of who it's going to be, it's going to be a new quarterback because Haynes King got a game and a half underneath his belt. That's not enough. And I do so, think Jimbo's a better recruiter than he is a coach. We're talking about Harson being a better coach. Or, 100% better it, recruiter than coach. You know what? Uh, Ole Miss and Arkansas don't particularly scare me just because – And they should, shouldn't they? Maybe. Maybe they, more so than usual. Yeah. But, but they don't – I mean, right. they don't – they don't hit me as – I mean, they're just going to run away with it. They don't hit me like that. No, it, you know, I just don't know with Ole Miss. They had so much turnover. And, yes, they brought in some talent from the transfer portal, don't get me wrong. But how well is that that talent going to gel together in that quick of a, a span of time? You lost DJ Durkin, who's a hell of a defensive coordinator. You promoted a guy who's got zero experience calling a game. I just don't know what to expect from them. And we punched them in the mouth at our house last year. It wasn't like, you know what I mean, they had us on the ropes at any point. Arkansas is the same way. We went into Fayetteville and whipped them. Jay Head, they can, they do you know why? Do you know why Auburn beat Arkansas why, pretty handily? Deep shot? Two of them. There you go. Just trying Stretching to make a field. point here. That's what I've been talking about in a couple of articles, heard. guys. There's a point, guys. You're not just talking about – dog just knocked my light off here <laughs> you're not just talking about a, a incomplete pass you're talking about points guys points no i agree explosive plays have to be a bigger part of the offense and being able to generate yards in bunches cole you, you've been spot on with that i think zach calzada fits what they want to do and they'll be able to do that more with him if the wide receiver play is there and i think it can be Yeah, I appreciate the thoughts, Kyle. I just – I didn't – I never understood the five and a half, six games because I think it's more likely that we start 5-0 and oh than that we don't. National perception. Hey, listen, with everything that happened this offseason, the backslide last year to end the season, you know, this is what you get, you know what I mean, when you have the kind of offseason and the end of a, of a regular season that we had. When you lose to Houston in the Birmingham Bowl, this is what people predict. But what yeah. they can't account for are the changes that this staff has made and the changes that we've made in talent acquisition since then. And do the parts better fit the scheme now? And I think they do. Yeah. I like it. Hey, Sparks, we appreciate right, you, Big Joe. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. Cole just entered the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> Zach, hit us with, hit us with, we got one more. Last caller. Let's hit her one, one more right here. Then we'll let Cole go uh, check on Miss Pink. She's been waiting on it. She got his, four. You're live. Got his cake ready. <laughs> Who do we have on here? I'm listening so intently. <laughs> three, three, four. Bro, I just can't shake coal right now. He looks like he's a coal miner all of a sudden. Three, three, four. Looks like he might have he might have fell asleep waiting. So we'll just oh. shut down the coal line and oh. uh, you guys can close down the show, man. Uh, well, listen, what a great show, man. I, I think that's the most callers we've ever had. I don't even think we had to go to the chat box. And if we, if you did uh, have questions for us in the chat box, just uh, give us a call next week, man. We're going to we're gonna, we're gonna, it's a call-in show for a reason. We'll, we'll try Jeffrey, to hit you uh, I think we hit 200 live watchers at once this all time. Right. Which was a we, new... hit over, we hit over 220 at one point. Hey, all right. Appreciate that, man. That's big time. And and for, uh, for BK telling everybody to uh, go like and subscribe – our YouTube channel, Auburn Live on 3. Also, uh, Auburn Live on 3. If you're not a member, man, you're listening to some of our best uh, 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 posters and the community we have over at the, the, the website, the corner, our message board. We got, always got some great conversations. Um, and if we didn't get to your question, you can always go ask them on the corner. Uh, right now, we got a special $1 for an entire year. It's freaking bananas, but we, we, we like bananas. So, uh, go check us out, Auburn Live on 3, man. We appreciate everybody calling in and some of the uh, – questions we got to uh chase woods cody uh sam 11 solly g with the uh the epic the legendary call and of course, awesome. sir. i and can't of wait course. to go back and watch that <laughs> of course, I'm, telling you, I'm telling you two two claps and a rick flair on that one baby it happened <laughs> uh, let's see uh austin letlow bow from birmingham brooks or the the cherry popper called back in uh stephen queef yes stephen queef uh, little George with his uh, people locked up in the basement. Not an insider. I we think, appreciate uh, it. Jeffrey, I think it's Lord George on is the board. It, it is. It is. God bless. Now he's going to come looking for me. Lord George, man. <laughs> LG, son. 
Uh, we appreciate it. Ishmael via Dong Dong. Yes. Another Great epic dong. caller, man. We appreciate that, Dong Dong, via Ishmael. Ishmael, whatever the hell you want to say it. Uh, <laughs> Auburn means, man, big time. He, he's a legend. Excellent. We appreciate him calling Excellent. in and, and, and contributing, man. We hope to hear back from him more. And, and of course, Sparks there at the end. And uh, the number one guest of the night, even on top of uh, Mr. Solly, was Miss P. Yes. Right. I just want right. to call and tell Cole happy birthday. I, t- I told her to wait in the car, but. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Oh, Cole is sleeping stand. alone on his birthday. There he is. He's, that birthday cake's about to be in the trash. Oh. Candle's, <laughs> candles going to be going up to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, hey, thank y'all, everybody, man. We really appreciate it. Y'all check us out Thursday on the Shrivel Pod. We're going to uh, talk a lot of recruiting, a lot of uh, – Commitments coming up, some decisions being made, some visits being taken are, are planned for the next uh, Big Cat coming up at the end of July. Uh, but for, for Jay head for Cole, I'm Jeffrey Lee, man. We really appreciate it, everybody. Stay out of the left lane. See you.